Welcome back to our second hot topic. And uh, it's time for us to take a look at ECOWAS plan to unveil cyber security advancement platform today, Tuesday. The economic community of West African state is set to launch the joint platform for advancing cyber security in West Africa. And that event will be taking place today in Abuja, Nigeria. And we have been joined by Dominic Rume Urere, certified blockchain architect and metaverse expert. He's joining us from Wari this morning. Good morning to you, Dominic. Good morning to you. Thanks for having me. Glad to have you join us. Well, according to ECOWAS, this initiative is dedicated to enhancing regional cyber diplomacy, safeguarding cybercrime, and upholding data sovereignty. Now, I get it just from listening to reading it out that this is a big deal. But tell us, how big a deal is this initiative? <laughs> it's a very big deal. When you look back at history, like in 2021, one of the biggest banks in Africa, Guarantee Trust Bank, was targeted through cyber attack. And they used a particular malware called the Kabanak to steal a lot of customers' data and also their account numbers with their password. When you look at it as well, in, um, so that's in 2021, the West African power pool cyber attack, right? Happened. And this cyber attack caused widespread power outage in a lot of countries in Africa. Even the African Union Commission in 2022 was also attacked. And they used a particular um, malware called the Lazarus malware to steal sensitive data and internal communication. So cyber security is not a destination, it's a journey. Mm. And ECOWAS unveiling this cyber security advancement platform today, Tuesday in Abuja. Um, that is designed to help countries in the region to improve their cyber security posture is one that is actually in the right direction because this platform will actually provide a number of resources to countries and that includes training of technical cap and training of technical skill sets having capacity building for cyber security professionals and there are tools and resources that they will give to these people to help their countries to still protect critical infrastructure when you look at it too, during the, through this platform, they will create a forum that they will be able to share information and coordinate their cyber security efforts. So it is something that is in collaboration with both the United States and the European Union. They have also joined forces with the African Union of Peace and Security Development. Mm. So it is a big deal. All right. So this was birthed in, in Germany in 2022, December to be precise, with focus on building measures, confidence-building measures, are we finally going to see an improved inter-trade relations in the sub-region? Because it's been a major problem for people on the continent, the sub-region particularly. Uh, trade relations has not been smooth as we expect it to be. Do you see this facilitating that improving on trade liberalization within the sub region well when you talk about trade um, relationship there are a lot of factors to consider a lot of factors like um, a uniform currency borders um, porosity and all of those things now this is technologically focused right um, in terms of being able to exchange intellectual property in the tech market yes maybe we can start having that excellent exchange program between countries that have more experts for cyber security to also help out because due, through this program they are creating like a forum that brings everyone together if we see that okay maybe in terms of digital um commerce right as it relates to the tech space yes that would be um heightened the trade relationship there would be heightened However, when you talk of maybe physical cash crop like cocoa, like oil and all that, well, maybe the efficiency that um, something like you no know, cyber security attack happened with the power grid some days, some years back, which was in 2021. Maybe the efficiency that this particular platform will give to be able to prevent things like this from happening will also better trade relationships between these countries. Hmm. I don't know how much you know about this event that's going to take place in Abuja today. 
Um, and how involved would you say um, the, the ECO has, has um, gotten the youth? You are youth, you're young, you're, I mean, tech survey, and I know that um, the future is tech, right? How involved did you say that um, the youth are involved in the activities of ECOWAS, uh, especially as, as it concerns this event that's taking place today in Abuja? So the ECOWAS truly in their um, relationship, they've, okay, I belong to a group called the Collective Rise of Africa, the Peaceful Collective Rise of Africa. And truly, the ECOWAS have been able to involve a couple of young people into their um, system as well. However, much more is still there to be done, to be able to see that um, more appointments are given to people, especially stakeholders in different regions that have youth, um, very high youth participation. Now, the ECOWAS have actually done quite a good job. However, there has been no very deep um, education. Because you see, for this technology to grow, right, there are a number of factors that have contributed to the increase in this cyber attack in West Africa. The growing use of technology in the region. And you know, it is a lot of youth that use technology in the region. The lack of cyber security awareness and resources too. So to be able to also get these youths that are using most of these technological devices and infrastructure involved in um, making them aware and giving them resources to also protect themselves from these things. We would have seen that they get more youth involved even before this type of event is taking place. However, to address all of this, they are going in the right direction, starting to invest into education and awareness. And um, something I also did recently in my book, From Code to Consciousness, one that I shared how artificial intelligence can combat a lot of these forces of security. Right? I said they need to also see that they strengthen their cybercrime laws and enforcement, and this is coming from the ethics side of it. So the ECOWAS, truly, they've done a, a quite a commendable job in terms of getting the youth involved. However, more is still needed to be done. When you say more is still needed to be done, what more would you like to see done? <laughs> okay, when I say more is still needed to be done, what more would I like to see? Okay, so building a cybersecurity workforce, um, promoting public and private partnerships, also raising awareness of cybersecurity risk that is involved. We we'll see that the more that we're talking about is actually done. <laughs> All right. Dominic Rome, thank you so much for your time on the breakfast this morning. All right, thank you very much. I'm definitely I'm looking forward to see. Yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to see uh, the ECO has been more effective in enabling, you know, um, integration in West Africa. I I'm definitely looking well, forward to that. Well, you know, cybersecurity is a team sport, right? Mm. And availing the platform is timely, as West Africa has been a target for cybersecurity attacks in recent years. Why is that? Why is West Africa a target? Because the because technology is growing in the region, and because technology is growing in the region, you definitely see people taking careers in things like certified um, ethical hacking. You start seeing more white hackers. You start seeing more that want to test their might. Just like you have nuclear weapons in South Korea, you have in Russia, and they really want to test whatever they are learning. You need to implement it. Even when you want to put a product in the market, as someone in the tech space, when we Put out our first application, our first um, web app, anything. We test it. We have penetration testing. Even the banks, they do cybersecurity penetration and firewall testing. So this growing need, because you don't want to go to the bank, you want to sit at, in the comfort of your home and do these financial transactions. So there is need, as the technology is evolving, a lot of risks are happening. And if we are having a cocoa farm where the processes in 10 years remains the same, then it will be good. But since this technology, where the process evolves every three months, every six months, then there is need for this type of education, this type of partnership, this type of collaboration to see that we can amplify our security and cyber defense for the because, future. Because and criminal testings. Criminal testings yes. will be taking place from time to time, <laughs> from from tech savvy youth, just like yourself, just like yourself. But I'm sure you are not into crimes. 
I'm sure you do not test criminally. And um, <laughs> you're using your tech knowledge to um, improve the country and Nigeria's economy. Right, Rumi? Yes, yes, as one that is an educator and author, especially of three books, one that has also seen that we contribute positively to the GDP and also has employees employed, over 11 employees now in the company. We have seen that whatever we do, we bring back the revenue into the country and we're able to use it to better the lives of people. Kudos, kudos, Dominic. Proud of you. Dominic Rume Uwere, certified blockchain architect and metaverse expert, has been my guest on the hot topic. Thank you so much, Dominic. Thank you very much for having me. Okay, so that's our package this morning on The Breakfast. But before I go, I leave you with our quote of the day. Okay, so the quote of the day is, technology should improve your life, not become your life. I take it again. Technology should improve your life and not become your life. You need to sometimes drop this phone, just switch it off and just keep it somewhere. Maybe for one hour, two hours or three hours in a day. It shouldn't become your life. And that's from Billy Cox. Technology should improve your life, not become your life your life. I am Maureen Menon Wezigwe on behalf of the entire crew. I say thank you for your time and join us tomorrow for another episode of The Breakfast. Good morning. <laughs>